All right, everybody, and welcome to the Power Com. Oops, my my audio is down. Sorry. Welcome everybody to the Power Comics uh, Book Club. I'm here with uh, Jim Rugg. Jim, what's going on, man? Not much. So excited to finally be here in the uh, in the Power Comics headquarters. <laughs> this is it. This is our. This is it. This is. Uh, this is the uh, this is where all the magic happens. All the power is created right here um, on the air. So thanks so much for joining us, man. This is a long time coming, as we were saying while we were doing our green room chit chat. You know, <laughs> too long. I feel like this is the culmination of uh, 20 years of making comics, and I finally arrived. <laughs> here it is, man. This is it. This is where this is where it all ends at the Power Comics. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. This is where it starts. Um, That's right. This is the beginning, not the end. Totally. Um, well, this is awesome, man. Yeah, I mean, I've been such a fan of Cartoonist Kayfabe now for a few years. It was this thing I kind of heard about, uh, actually, our composer uh, for, 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 the, for the TV show that I make, Dark Side of the Ring, who's a huge fan of uh, Cartoonist Kayfabe. And he turned me on. He's like, yeah, you got, he's talking about Power Comics on there. And I'm like, what? Because, you know, you guys kind of, what, maybe stumbled across our old Tumblr or something? What's the story there? Yeah, I, I love these 80s black and white comics, self-published comics, small press, all of it. And once I started getting into them, I found your, I think it was a Tumblr feed or something. It was, it was before you were on Instagram, but it was still Power Comics. And it turned me on to a lot of comics, including the one that we're going to talk about here tonight. Uh, you know, I found that from, from your lead, uh, your, your Power Comics lighthouse of pointing these books out. But, you know, so many of these books are obscure and barely written about that whenever you find somebody who's posting pics of them and, and descriptions, I mean, that's a that's a good resource there. There weren't very many of those a few years ago. I, I guess there are more now, but it's it's hard to find these comics or to find out any information about it. So when I found Power Comics, I've been on board f for quite a while. <laughs> <laughs> that's so awesome. Yeah, like I think... Um uh it, it's crazy like since we've started covering them and i'm not trying to to use a wrestling term put ourselves over but it sort of seems that for some reason now websites like mile high and ebay are price gouging these comics that normally we would have found for a quarter or maybe still can if you're lucky right yeah i, I bet there aren't that many places where you can find them for a quarter i always think like whatever you find that is that quarter value because these were everywhere I don't know, 10 years ago or something, um, it swings the other way, you know, like that's just how it goes. It's almost like that's the last step before they throw them into the dumpster. And now suddenly they're hard to find. And, you know, they're kind of rare to begin with a lot of these things. It's not like they had wide distribution for the most part. So now you have more than, than, than the two of us looking for them prices are going to go up you know i know it's crazy like like when i'm seeing like you know like like right now like john tar is probably 50 bucks on, on mile high plus maybe maybe over that new york city outlaws forget about it um that's a whole other story um but another reason that we're on the on the on the uh, sorry about the echo apparently i had some horrible egregious echo on my mic when we started the show but that's hey this is the power comics channel shit like that's gonna happen um I'd expect nothing less <laughs> <laughs> my my audio staff here is slipping. Um, all right. So the other reason that we're kind of doing this um, is because you and I are both major wrestling fans, right? So and we're going to be looking at the saga of the Von Erich Warriors, which is a bona fide wrestling power comic. I think one of the only ones that I've uh, really seen um, that, that I can give a full power comic stamp to. But I wanted you just to kind of tell us a little bit, Jim, like about your history with um uh your wrestling fandom where did it start when did you when were you when did you become a wrestling fan man it's perfect for a comic show because i i started out before i was even reading comics i was watching wrestling and it would have been you know wwf era it was um world class uwf like once i got into wrestling it was everything i could find on cable and there was a lot of wrestling on cable at that time i, I don't know maybe mid to late 80s sometime in there and I would just watch anything I could see. Like I saw, um, you know, stunning Steve Austin when he partnered with Chris Adams and, you know, they split wow. up. So th those were fun times for like a young wrestling fan. But that's what I was drawing. Like I would be drawing wrestlers in my school notebooks, you know, and for my friends and stuff like that before I ever bought a comic book. And then once I got into comics, it was like this natural transition, especially, you know, superhero comics and pro wrestling man, they're, they're very similar. A lot of very similarity true. in their storytelling, their, their, the way the characters look. Um, you know, one just kind of naturally led to the other. Um, but yeah, I, I fell into wrestling. I don't know. I must have been eight, 10, something like that. And just 
couldn't look away. I can remember like Jim Duggan and Iron Sheik going at it on Saturday mornings and bleeding, you know, uh, Nikolai Volkov and Iron Sheik jumping Jim Duggan and, and getting color on a Saturday morning. <laughs> so pretty intense stuff for a kid at home that had no idea exactly how wrestling worked. And it's like, what is happening? And that must have been right before Jim Duggan and the Iron Sheik got busted. Because yes, which, again, yeah. I wouldn't know about for decades uh, right. later, but yeah, about yeah, that time. What we're referring to is uh, Jim Duggan, All-American hero, uh, was paired against the Iron Sheik, the sort of foreign menace, villain, heel. And um, they, you know, back in those days, you were not allowed to travel together if you were a bad guy and a good guy uh, or a, f a baby face and a heel, as they say. And uh, Jim Duggan and Sheik decided to travel together kind of in a last minute sort of situation and, of course, got busted uh, by the cops you know, pulled over and, of course, you know, drugs and other paraphernalia found in the car. But that became a huge newspaper story. Is wrestling fake? You know, um, which has always was been, you know, something that fans and people have suspected over the years. But that really blew it open. That was one of the big moments. So it's funny that that's kind of lining up directly with, you know, your fandom right in there. I love that. Yeah, it's, um, you know, I, as a longtime wrestling fan, you know how it is. Once it gets in your blood, it's sort of like. It just sticks with you, you know, and that way it also reminds me of the superhero comics because you remember those those big angles, the big stories. And uh, <laughs> Iron Sheik and, and Duggan was one of the first ones for me. So, oh, that's amazing. Mine kind of similar, but later for me, my first real wrestling memory, I think, was when I was five or six, six, maybe. And it was uh, the Hogan Sergeant Slaughter conflict, you know, where Sergeant Slaughter uh you know hey that's a comic book character ostensibly come to life you know in, in many ways uh turned heel and became a, uh um a um, iraqi sympathizer right and i i it's, it's insane and i uh and you know hogan's all-american hero fighting the foreign menace and i was a huge sergeant slaughter fan because i love gi joe so here i go as a six-year-old kid to the show and I'm cheering on Sergeant Slaughter. My parents are really concerned because they're getting all these looks from people like, why is your son cheering on the the um, Iraqi you know, flag bearer? You know, so it was that was my entry to this crazy, uh, amazing world that is wrestling. And of course, you know, ever since, you know, I, I've worked on the show Dark Side of the Ring that we talk about seldom on Power Comics. But, um, you know, we've been doing three seasons of a, of a show about wrestling. And one of the episodes that we did in our very first season was about the the, the very subject of tonight's comic. So this is a real crossover in, in, in many ways. It's cartoonist, kayfabe, dark side of the ring, power comics, super hyper crossover. So um, so yeah, so Saga of the Von Erics, Jim, uh, how, did you find this in a bin? What's your relationship with this comic? So after I had gotten into the 80s black and white self-published stuff, the power comics, and I found your site. I believe that I found this because of your site. I think you oh. posted pics of it. Um, that's oh. how it came to my attention. And I don't remember where I tracked it down. It might have been my comic shop. It's not one I randomly found in a box. It was one I was hunting and, and had to had to find one online somewhere to uh, to get my own copy. And I don't know how much you know about this comic, but I'm curious. Like, it must have not been very many copies. You know, it seems like it was produced as a wrestling promotion by a third party who was probably trying to sell these at the matches, you know, at the, uh, the sportatorium in Dallas. And, uh, how many of those could they have sold a couple of hundred, a few hundred, maybe probably that's kind of my guess. You know, um, let me see if I can bring up here. It might take me a second, but let me see if I can actually bring, cause we, cause of course, when we made the show, um, and we, and we subsequently did the Von Eric story, you know, for dark side of the ring. And we went out to Hawaii to interview, Kevin Von Erich, who is tragically the only surviving brother of the Von Erich dynasty. Uh, it was a, I'm sure we'll, I'm going to show uh, just a couple clips from Dark Side just so we can get in the zone here for uh, the story tonight. But um, uh, yeah, it, it's a, it, they were one of the premier wrestling family dynasties and they endured tragedy after tragedy after tragedy where, um, you know, one brother passed away. Uh, the first brother, actually, you know, I have a magazine cover here. David Von Erich, you know, <laughs> uh, who tragically passed away in Japan from a stomach infection. And that kind of set the tone for this string of tragedies that would plague this this poor family 
um, whether that was, you know, suicide through mental health issues, not to get too heavy on the Power Comics channel, but really a succession of tragedies would plague the Von Erich dynasty. And Kevin, who we did kind of the episode about, is the last surviving member uh, of the Von Erich family. And we sort of went out and, and captured his story. But in that process, we had to ask him about this comic because we were doing, you know, the um, Power Comics at the time. You know, do, you know, posting on Instagram and whatnot. And so we had to ask him just like had to get our one power comics related question into Kevin Von Erich was what's the deal with um, the 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 uh, the saga of the Von Erichs. <laughs> so I was going to try and see if I can just pull up because I actually have all the transcripts. I'm just going to see if I can if I can add, uh, add it here and see uh, what he said. But I, 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 I know it actually made the final cut of the episode. We did show. The comic book in the episode um i think it might have even made like the preview trailer or something i, I, I feel like it, <laughs> maybe it's very photogenic yeah 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 possibly um okay he, so i asked him do you remember the comic book and he says yes and he's like i don't know a lot about it but um they came out with a comic book where uh we were these noble characters that were taken off into space by uh and then into another planet and so we fought some you know some evil there i don't remember but it was you know some evil guys and a bunch of uh, uh a bunch of sissies in space as he calls it that's so hilarious <laughs> nothing to worry about uh nothing to worry about space aliens they're they're pushovers so he's make cracking jokes here don't be worried about them but it was fun you know um and, and all the artwork was so well done and they took a lot from pictures which we'll see a lot of tracing and uh they they, they drew them off a lot of the eight by tens you know that's kind of what they probably sourced a lot of this stuff from or promotional materials um so that, so that's just awesome and then you know of course we had them talk about it on the show so maybe before we crack open the comics should we just take a take a, a quick look from from dark side just for some contextual purposes not self-promotional reasons <laughs> All right, so let's power up the, the, the Power TV here, Jim. This is, uh, this is what we do here at Power Comics. Such a high-tech setup that you have here. <laughs> For, well, apparently my Echo killed it at the top. But um, All right, so let's take a look. Here's a, here's a um, maybe I'll show two little quick snippets, if you guys don't mind. They're very brief. Here's the beginning of the show that teases the story of the Von Erichs, just for any non-wrestling fans that are watching this and kind of kind of know what we're talking about. So here we go. See you on the other side. When we talk about wrestling in the 80s, it's hard to imagine how popular the Von Erich brothers were. Those guys were ready-made. The Von Erich family could have been the equivalent of, of the Kennedys. It was a dynasty. It was a family dynasty. They were the all-American boys from Texas. They are real-life Texas heroes in the flesh. They didn't have to put them in a funny outfit. They didn't have to give them a different name. They had the look, they had the physiques, they had the athletic ability. They were superheroes in the ring. But then there was constant bad news. The Von Erichs could have two legacies. They could have the legacy of being one of the biggest attractions, wrestling families in history, or they could have the legacy as a cautionary tale. Von Erich is dead, they Von Erich was found dead, Von Erich was seriously injured after. He just couldn't take it anymore. I love the wrestling business all my life, but it's not that important. Some people say, well, it's just the pressure of the spotlight. Other celebrities have been unable to cope. Who knew we were going to have, you know, four major deaths over the next three years? During their brief reign, the Von Erich family ascended to wrestling superstardom, but just as quickly suffered relentless personal tragedy. In this episode, the last surviving brother reflects on his unimaginable journey. So there you have it. Um, that that's the kind of open to the show that that we did, and then, um, but yeah, you could see. I mean, these guys were on top of the world. You know, in in, in Dallas, they were the the uh, the main um, uh, celebrities. You know, so um, you know, you know, of Dallas and. I mean, they were huge, drawing huge crowds. And of course, um, when, when there was any of the, um, uh, you know, funerals, unfortunately, they were just attended by thousands of people. They were huge in Dallas. And so it's no shock that eventually um, they would uh, go on to produce various merchandise things. And then I think that's why we get this. 
But this comic comes at a very interesting time because it comes at a time when two of the five brothers have already passed away. And the Von Erichs are uh, putting on this kind of larger than life uh, facade as these characters that can defeat any evil. Like every week on TV, you'd watch them Saturday morning and they were, they'd be fighting some other menace, you know, some heel. And they were, they, they were Fabulous the uh, free birds, perhaps. Right. Yep, exactly. The, the free birds, Kabuki, you know, anything like that. And they were just, you know, the all conquering. And um, so, but when real life tragedy started to happen, it kind of started to chip away, unfortunately, at that image, and they had to kind of pivot to always kind of save face a little bit, which was something we looked at in the episode. But this comic is coming at a very interesting time because it's coming at a time when that's all unfolding. And so here we are coming out with a comic that's us defeating aliens, you know, so... And I, I don't want us to uh, to leave this cover before we comment on that thumb. Because <laughs> oh. Something is wrong there. Oh yeah, you're right. I never noticed that. And of course, the the hand signal is the claw. That's the uh, signature von Eric finishing move, where they just put it on your forehead and squeeze, and you pass out. That's a move their father, Fritz von Eric, who's pictured right here. Uh, that was he made famous that that finishing move. And this is a uh, Carrie von Eric and Kevin von Eric, the main kind of two Von Erich brothers that were still alive at this point. Um, you know, Kevin is the one we did the episode with, and then Carrie would tragically pass away a few years after the printing of this comic. But yeah, this, I love this cover, Jim. It's like airbrushed side of the van. Um, I mean, it is airbrushed, right? It must be. Certainly that background. And, and yeah, I think all the color is, you know, the, the black line there is a drawn line, but uh, I think everything else is probably airbrushed. And perfect of that time you know you you say like side of a van absolutely um <laughs> you know you hear those stories like these guys were kind of rock and roll right you know they they were oh, the yeah. celebrities uh you know and they were young like they were they were groomed from a very young age to be that and uh this cover kind of personifies that type of lifestyle that wrestling has moved away from out of necessity that wild party kind of yes. territorial mm -hmm. superstar wrestling um, you know, but these guys might have been like the royal family of that type of the apex of that, of the of the territory stars, son of the promoter. Like they were big. They were like the Beatles. And, and this cover kind of does them justice. Totally. I mean, you, you would get the Dallas local paper and there'd be like, you know, there'd be like fold outs of the Von Erics, you know, and, <laughs> um, you know, and, 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 and this is also just kind of indicative. I just want to I want to show off this here, too, before we flip it open. I also had this Von Erich family album book. Wow. This hardcover thing that I had to have. And I'm sure that depending on when, when this came out, you know, I'm sure they did like, you know, a lot of these. Uh, I love how there's the autograph section, which is also in the um, the comic, which is interesting. But, you know, you'll, you'll sort of see that their whole family saga is covered here. There's Fritz, the patriarch of, of, of the Von Erichs. But then like you kind of look at there's the claw. You see that's, you know. <laughs> Perfect That's a great from, picture. It's a great picture. This whole thing is really just menacing filled. with that hand stick. Almost the Jack Kirby hand sticking out, you know, like like totally. the big square fingers coming at you. He kind of has a Kirby vibe. I could see him like, yeah. Um, so he does. Wow. Um, but yeah, it's got all these like, you know, family photos. And then it just kind of, you know, um, yeah, it's great. It kind of, you know, really humanizes their story through these pictures. And something I remember when I traveled to Hawaii to meet with Kevin, I immediately hit the family archives and just went into all the photos they had and scanned everything for the episode. So when you see the episode, there's just a zillion, kajillion photos in there. But are there any any uh, connection between the comic book and that in that album? Because production wise, you know, they do have that autographs page. But I wonder, like, there's a huge bunch of credits. I don't want to get, you know, jump ahead, but there's a lot of credits for this comic book. And it feels like they are some sort of a production uh, I don't know, Taylor like a graphics published. company or something like that. And in that book, you know, you can see it's the same sort of thing, like capitalize on the success of the Von Erics, get a, get a license for it or, or else do it for them. Um, but it's, it's just stuff to sell. It's just promotional, you know, the most popular act in the territory. Let's sell everything we can. Merch table items. Yeah. Like for sure. I, I'm not, I'm not sure. I don't see the, I see it. I only see the Sage productions here and then Taylor publishing put out that book. So but one uh, more difference. Um, sure. If you notice on on your on your copy, 
you uh-huh. have a date stamped like right underneath the logo. Oh. I don't have that. Um, so I don't know if maybe oh. I ended up with an uncirculated copy. You know, if it comes from my comic shop, they're based in Texas. So, you know, the other thing that happens with these kinds of self-published and black and white small press books is you end up with boxes of them wherever they're produced because often they aren't distributed, you know, very well. And so those boxes funnel into wherever. If you're a Texas comic book company, the, the small press in Texas probably finds its way to you um, because that's what people do when they find a box of comics. You take it to whatever comic shop you can find to sell it or see if wow. it's worth anything. And, uh, you know, it's it's like I said, pretty sure I got my copy from a Texas back issue dealer. So, man, you, might you got a an, bunch. You got an unstamped Von Eric Warriors, bro. You better grade that like tonight. Yes, that's what um, I was just thinking. Yeah, <laughs> you got to grade that, bro. Um so, uh, well, amazing, amazing. Uh, let's get into it. So, so here we are. Um, no promises here, but um, basically, we're just hit with a wall of text. <laughs> a lot of exposition, of course, which is very we're used to on this channel. By the way, we're always we're always like groaning and moaning over the exposition here. But um, also, the mark of the amateur comic book uh, creator is that you open up the first two pages there's no artwork on the inside yes. cover or on page one no splash page you know like typically the splash page by contrast look at a jack kirby marvel comic the splash page is as good as the cover of course uh, not the oh, case yeah. not the case with these kinds of uh, uh of small press comics <laughs> yeah i know i know um deep in the caverns of space and time there exists a world of peace and beauty known as namoria so now it's like they're really bringing some some wild ideas off the first sentence here. Okay, I thought we're talking wrestling here. No. Um, and interesting to note, too, a reason why I showed the clip from Dark Side, that obviously is their real story. And they're not about really talking about the real story. So we're not, we're, we're actively trying to steer you into a science fiction plot here based on what's happening in the headlines, right? And for kids, obviously. But um, so for millennia, I'm guessing, the people of Namoria combined the customs and pageantry of their ancestry with the technology of the times to refine their bodies and minds to their (laughs) ultimate levels. That's great. Now for the first time in the history of the race, their way of life and ideals have been threatened by a very powerful and savage race of beings hailing from the outskirts of the known galactic frontier. Known to exist only for their relentless pursuit of war, the Nefarian race is quickly closing in on the peace-loving Nemorians. Though uh, technologically superior, the Nemorians have long since given up war games and weaponry thus when threatened with destruction of their way of life the nemorians must (laughs) turn to a savage and ruthless world of beings long ago decreed to be too violent for contact scanning the airwaves of the tiny blue world the nemorians discover a band of modern day warriors um and i and i love that carrie von eric is the modern day warrior and i love that that's a reference to rush which i think is amazing and one of the things is that the Von Erichs were always known for coming out to rock, popular rock songs. So Carrie Von Erich came out to uh, uh, Tom Sawyer by Rush. Uh, I think uh, Kevin came out to Cowboy Song by Thin Lizzy. Or no, Stranglehold, sorry, by, by Ted, Nugent. Ted Nugent. And David Von Erich came City out Mad to... Man. Yes, right. And then David came out to uh, uh, Cowboy Song by Thin Lizzy. So I, I love that. And then... When Rush would play in Dallas, Kerry would just come out, you know, <laughs> he'd just come out, he'd just come out on the stage, you know, when Tom Sawyer was ripping off the first few bars of that, which is great. I mean, it's awesome. So they discover a band of modern day warriors known as the Von Erics. I love this. The Nemorians are impressed with the Von Erics style of fighting, not out of greed or a desire for fame, but for the honor and glory of the people known as Texans. <laughs> Admiration for the Von Erichs quickly becomes a plan for survival. Wow. Okay. Cool. So that big, is quite a setup. It is. There's a lot to follow. Uh, that's okay. We got a lot to follow with this. So let's look. You know, at the one first... one more note on comics in Dallas. Yeah. Probably not just one more, but but one more sure. for now. Yeah. Is, uh, <laughs> they had a big comics convention there every year for a while, and it was it was big. Like Robert Crumb would come to it. So mm. imagine Robert Crumb at Dallas. Uh, fantasy fair or con- whatever it was called, but 
you know, like it was a big event and it was before comics were like they are now where there are, you know, hundreds of comic book conventions around the country and around the world. Right. Back then there weren't that many. So like you would have underground comic superstar Robert Crumb next to, you know, whoever's drawing Spider-Man or Stan That's Lee, uh, you know, at the same show. Wow. Pretty, pretty strange environment, you know, strange. When you think yeah. Of these different pieces all mixing together and it happened in Dallas. So, wow. That is weird. Yeah. Wow. Robert it's Crumb a nexus Dallas. of uh, comics and wrestling and just oddness all coming together there. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Rami, I agree. Satisfying font. Yeah. The, the lettering looks cool to me. I'm down with it. Um, all right. Let's look at this opening page here, which again, yeah, not much of a splash. <laughs> um, Boy, that top screen looks like it would come right out of a wrestling video game. Like, like, a, like a Nintendo Sega era wrestling video game. That's the view. I'm thinking more Game Boy. That looks very Game Boy mm. to me, you know, like just because it's it's crude, you know, it's very crushed. Um, but I love it. I mean, I I love. Um, this is obviously supposed to be Carrie here winning a match. It's actually he's winning the world title, which he did win against Ric Flair in oh, God '85. I'm guessing. I my my dates are a little off. I'm sure some wrestling fans. Yeah, I'm might. trying to think of when I, it might have been. It might have been a little later. It might have been 87 or something, 86, 87. It was kind of a strange thing. I, I think, uh, I don't know that, that Kerry was was um, sober for that match. Ric Flair's talked about that match quite a bit, but right. it was such a big buildup and it was in Dallas and it was kind of like Kerry was going over, you know, and yeah. testament to Ric Flair's ability in the ring to, to get a match out of anyone. Yeah, I mean, yeah, so the story goes, you know, uh, David had just passed away and they did a big uh, Cotton Bowl event, big show, one of the biggest shows the world class ever put on. And uh, the the governing wrestling alliance that governed all of the, 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 the world title chose Kerry then to sort of win the world championship, you know, um, in light of the tragedy of David passing away. And so he won. He, won. he was only champion, champion for a brief period of time, but here he was winning it. And this is the first thing that they're highlighting here in the in the issue, which is which is cool. Um, Texas Stadium. Kerry wins the world title in front of the largest crowd ever. Um, announcer. He's done it. He's done it. Kerry Von Eric is the new world champion. Love it. And then, of course, we've got a huge staff here. We always talk about the staff of Power Comics <laughs> on the channel. And, and, and sometimes the bigger the staff, the less likely of a chance it is as a Power Comic. But I definitely think that you know, I mean, this definitely is amateur. It has it all over, just as we talked about. Um, but that that's cool. You know, we got an editor. Three in editors involved in this project, plus an art production coordinator. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, most of the times when I see a staff this big, I, I tend to think that they're just kind of like, it's kind of when, you know, when you're making an independent movie and you're just kind of making up credits to make it, to give it that more sense of professionalism. I'm sure that's what's going on here. I'm guessing. But... Yeah, it's peculiar. You know, my my gut is that this is a maybe a local production team of who knows what advertising flyers, um, maybe working with local theaters for promotion. But, you know, some somebody that's kind of doing some kind of commercial work and just sees this as an opportunity to to apply our staff, you know, maybe one of their kids or a friend is the is the artist and everything else is like, hey, we're already an advertising company. We can do this. Why not? Right. Of course. Uh, also, just looked it up. Kerry Von Eric Ric Flair was 84. So okay, uh, much earlier. May 6, than I 84. Yeah. Uh, all right. So while America celebrates the newest world champion, I love this too because this is also um, this satellite here is kind of part of the world world class championship wrestling. By the way, is the promotion that the Von Erichs, uh, th th that is their family promotion and television show that you would see uh, in the early 80s. And the satellite, from my memory, was kind of part of the I iconography of uh, world class. So it's cool that that's incorporated into the story because him winning the world championship then is beamed into space, man. Uh, you know, which I love. That's cool. I like that. Um, so a single sliver of hope slices through the unbounded dimension of time and space. And then uh, traveling faster than the light itself, the fate of a forlorn race rests in the will and determination picking up this world title win. I love that. Um, <laughs> And then these characters, I mean, this has got to be traced, right? I mean... Yeah, I was looking at this. So the Von Erichs, big in Israel, right? Very I, big. I wonder if they're, if they're tracing this from some... Because they're so huge. Like, these are Earthlings. I think they're supposed to be the alien race. 
I know. Clearly, is... they're Earth. They're the most human-looking characters I've ever seen, and they're supposed to be aliens. I think this is a trace photo for something. Well, it's amazing. Yeah, Von Erich's huge in Israel, which is random. But they, uh, th the television show, beamed over to Israel, much like it is here in this comic. And um, and fun little fact that we learned while making the episode: the Von Erichs were the first. Uh, celebrities allowed into Jesus's tomb with cameras and somewhere out there is footage of them. That's how big they were, you know, like, let, you know, let's go to Jesus's tomb and just, you know, film some shit. And um, so somewhere that exists, we tried to find it, couldn't get it for the episode. Bummer. But um, yeah, I don't know what's going on here, but maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. Um, I also think that the, the, the drawing style has a little, um, this is a weird reference, but kind of has a little wall street journal, uh, you know, when they do those kind of portraits of op-ed writers, you know, or something like that's what it kind of looks like to me a little bit. Um, weird style, but probably traced, which those are I'm, or to some extent. Um, all right. So you have chosen well, Raztar. <laughs> the council <laughs> has accepted your proposal. You may transport the Von Erichs at your will. <laughs> that's amazing. Uh, of three mere earthlings. Okay. I'm not sure what that really. Oh, the ri okay. The rest this is weird that it's up here continuation down here. The fate of a forlorn race rests in the will and termination of three mere earthlings, the Von Erichs. I love it's just like, now hit the enter button and uh, that will teleport them across time and space. <laughs> yeah, totally, totally, totally. Yes, Power Comics YouTube is huge in Uzbekistan. That's right, Tofo. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, now, how about this drawing? This feels right out of some kind of religious something. Fritz is on his knees having this like Saul, you know, on, on the road to Damascus being hit by the light. You're right. We always joke kind of on the channel that a lot of power comics look like, you know, religious leaflets that you get, you know. And and yeah, definitely. I love this wacky leg here from Kevin Von Eric. That's, I mean, that's fun. Um <clears throat> But remember, Raztar, you alone are responsible. Yeah, so this is, I guess, Fritz von Erich. Is he thinking about his his sons, or is are they all just zapping together here? I, I think he was in the middle of prayer. Interesting. Possibly. 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 <laughs> I mean, what else is Fritz doing on his knees? I don't. I don't know. Like he's trying to. I don't know. Fix the. Garbage he disposal? lost the contact. <laughs> yeah, he's right. Around exactly. the <laughs> yeah, he's working on the truck. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, ecstasy. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. I, and I, I've totally seen... Oh, it's so wild. I've seen this photo. This photo, I, you can't really see it because it's so small. But I have... This photo of, of, of Carrie is in the show. So they're definitely tracing because I, I have that exact expression he makes in as a photo in the episode so there you go pretty pretty wild not shocking though that that kevin image is an odd one though you wonder where that one comes from because i think it's probably traced as well but what I a weird know. pose almost mm -hmm. compositing like a different body and in, in top or you know, different top and bottom uh to make that one work because usually your arms and legs are opposite you know like whatever arm is back the other leg would be back but not in this pose <laughs> Yeah, it's it's right. Exactly. Jeff says, yeah, it's been three pages. We've seen five panels. Yeah, totally. The um, uh, yeah. And also the Von Eriks were skilled discus throwers. Maybe this is a discus pose from some <laughs> photograph. Um, anyway, um, all right. Credit Continue. to the creators if they're going that deep looking for their photo reference. That's a good hey. morgue if they're pulling out discus <laughs> Picks. Discus on Eric's. <laughs> discus pick. Dude, stop sending me your discus picks, man. All right. Um, all right. <laughs> and so it is ordained that it, uh, that the occupants of a planet long since determined to be useless will now produce the life saving element of a desperate lineage of people. Wow, we're getting heavy now. And this, these panels this... remind me a lot of Fletcher Hanks comics. I don't know if you've ever seen those, but totally. they're just these like super weird you know, sci-fi early superhero comics. And they feel like this, like especially the outer space stuff and a beam of light. Um, even the, the silhouette figures kind of have that feeling of, you know, like a crude art style. Yeah, there Sorry. you go. <laughs> it was just that it was at arm's length. <laughs> so, but yeah, you're right. The, this stuff is fantastic, by the way. I can't recommend Fletcher Hanks enough. Um, total outsider, just bizarro. What is this from the 50s, 60s? 
no earlier, like the late thirties and maybe early forties. Oh, he only wow. did comics for a couple of years, but it was in the beginning when there was no real system yet or, or language, you know, and everybody was just doing their own thing. And he was a weirdo. So his comics are just out there. Wow. You're t- totally right though. Great reference. Yeah. Fletcher Hanks definitely buy this, uh, buy, buy that. All right. I'm getting back into Von Eric's here. All right. So counselor, Ra- is this counselor Raztar here? Just hanging out in his nineties, late eighties bedroom here. Um, it's a very earth like apartment that he has. Absolutely. Counselor Raztar, wake up, sir. They have arrived. We are monitoring them at this time. <laughs> is this supposed to be a Von Eric? I think so. We also picked up a small object on the planet's surface with our sensors. Ah, my head. As if destined, the Von Erich's transportation to the planet Namoria coincided with less friendly Nefarian visitors. <laughs> okay, so that's supposed to be them not on a beach and transported somewhere. So that's pretty funny. That's a great panel at the bottom. The outer space and spaceship. Both of those look really good. Yeah, where's that swiped from? <laughs> Somewhere. Stealing NASA photos there. <laughs> yeah, right. Totally. Um, okay, now here's a here's where we get a first look at at a real alien here. Um, so meanwhile, uh, were there any indications that they were def- uh, they were detected? None, sir. Alpha Two has landed on the planet. Our warriors now await your orders, sir. Excellent, Lieutenant. Soon these spineless beings will bow before me. Ha ha ha. And then I guess we get some silhouette action here. Is that just because yeah, I'm not they sure couldn't what he's draw with that hand? Why it had to be blacked out? Well, just maybe it just didn't didn't work out that, that tracing, so you just you know just got covered up. <laughs> yeah, um, Kevin, Kerry, where are you? Over here, Dad. You boys, all right? Yeah, Dad. Look, the Von Erich family begins to explore the unknown planet, not knowing they are being tested. Kevin locates the wreckage of a space vehicle. Slow down and keep your eyes open. This ain't Kansas, Toto. <laughs> that looks very like a Star Wars piece of something. Maybe, perhaps. Yeah, a lot of interesting choices on like these silhouettes of characters. Um Yeah. Maybe a lot of things not going right. Uh yeah. Evan, you know, the, these drawings just they don't have a reference for this one, so uh mm-hmm. when in doubt, black it out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. We see that a lot for sure. Now, this next panel I like, and man, Jim, I don't know if you saw it. No worries if you didn't. We did a top 10 power control rooms video where we counted down the top 10 control rooms in all of power comics. And this one, this one is a good one. Had I, had I remembered this one, um, hard, here hard is... to keep all the control rooms straight. <laughs> I tried, uh, but yeah, Carrie Von Eric in a control room here. It's pretty awesome. And maybe, maybe, maybe traced from, uh, the world-class production truck or, uh, somewhere in the building of the Sportatorium was where all the world-class shows ran the most historic, amazing, incredible venue in all of wrestling, as far as I'm concerned, but who knows? I love it. I, I, cause I, cause I love like there's, there's the tape machine there, the, the, the quarter inch tape. Uh, it's awesome. And Carrie's here working at the desk, man, this is unreal. The boys begin to explore the alien ship. <laughs> so not the world-class production cable truck. This is the alien ship looking for clues to what has transpired. Curry, look out. And then here comes a, I guess a tiger. Watch those fangs. He looks poisonous. Carry with his super athletic ability sidesteps and catches the cat by the tail. Here, dad, catch. So pretty, pretty far out, right? I mean, it's a good page. It's hard not to be disappointed in that first panel that uh, it's not a crossover with aliens. Like the Von Erichs versus a Xenomorph. I, I, I would take that over the Nefarians. Totally. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not I like big the Nefarian the... design, but man, right. the alien tease is a good one. Yeah, totally. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah, I love this. You can see his boots too. I kind of like how they're, how, they're, how they're showing us that. That's pretty cool. Um, yeah, and it all looks really great um i think both the tiger and carrie are photo refer- probably traced you know and and from different sources of course but if you look like that's a really good tiger or lion or whatever that cat is and uh same with carrie von eric but i, I do think there's some photo tracing going on of course because you wouldn't necessarily uh pick up a cat like this you know <laughs> and it wouldn't it wouldn't 
it wouldn't it wouldn't be exactly like this is obviously supposed to you know coming from this angle so it's funny just putting those elements together and seeing how weird the output is you know when you're combining literally tracing from two different things also a little bit unclear like which panel do you read after the uh after the panel with fritz there in the doorway i always struggle with that i mean that's just yeah but i, I yeah i took a guess and i i think it was right um it's very strange but yeah hey, this whole thing is pretty delirious so far so poisonous fangs is so great i know like just call it for what it is yeah like a 300 a big... pound predator cat is not enough of a threat you've got to point <laughs> out know, poisonous. Fangs look poisonous <laughs> totally totally um digging this um this this portrait of kevin here though i don't know about you um uh I told you boys to slow down. I have to figure out what's going on here. Curiosity gets the best of them. <laughs> Look, Dad, I found some clothes. Okay, meanwhile, um, he should surrender. Peace with honor. I won't be a slave. This is, a, this is like some, yeah, this is like a Rush concert goers here too, which I love. Um, the Nemorian Council debates their fate. Please, gentlemen, come to order. Come to order. Ladies and gentlemen, please, slavery is not, and someone says, slavery is not honor. This is <laughs> crazy. So, and then this character, uh, silence, my friends, Emperor Zerail or Zeral, the emperor has made his decision. Will his race be destroyed? Yes, it would appear we are faced with a, a grim future. We must preserve our way of life, yet we cannot remove ourselves from the sacred code of nonviolence. <laughs> so world building here in the saga of the Von Eric comic. <laughs> the, the crossover that we're seeing is like a Star Trek episode. You know, where all Very these aliens so. are still just clearly humans. I mean, doesn't that guy look like some, like a villain or maybe an ally, but but somebody right out of a, a Star Trek episode, an early episode? A hundred percent. I would total. I could totally see that. That that's a lot of the times we always joke that most of the power comic influence doesn't actually come from comics. It comes from television, and that's why you know because no one they're not reading comics really as much. They're just kind of studying TV, and that's where the concepts and you know, the untrained art kind of comes from. And we see that a lot. And I could totally see that Star Trek being a major influence here, for sure. It's um, really a strange mashup of images because even the, that middle panel where it's like, you know, the council meeting or whatever, it totally looks like it's concert footage, right? It does, like, yeah, totally. It is. the weirdest, like, swipe files that they have for this comic. It's the only way they could do it. Um, okay, love this. I've definitely definitely seen this this photo um and this actually yeah it kind of does look like a little like you know <laughs> you know like that from the from the book um that i showed earlier <laughs> but love that picture of the von eric's there that's just super cool i would have that on a wrestling shirt might have to scan that and put that on a wrestling shirt for <clears throat> sure um so here we go dad this stuff itches quit your moaning you want to this is kind of hard to read i don't know what i'm supposed to do with it but <laughs> you boys are belly aching about little stuff, and we don't even know where we are, let alone how we got there. Walk around in your underwear all day. My boots don't fit. Then I don't wear none. On the screen is the answer to our crisis. I give you the Von Eriks. And then is it supposed to read like, uh? <laughs> you, know, like <laughs> you know, so great page, though. Cool that they just like, what a weird concept. Let's bring them on this giant television, you know? This is a weird book to read. You know, you, you you were jumping around there with your text a little bit, but just reading it in general, like there are big leaps between in the same panel sometimes between word balloons where like yeah, the I don't logic know is was... just peculiar. Like yeah. Carrie's complaining about the clothes being itchy. Yeah, what it's very this? weird. Very weird, very unnecessary. Um, but trying to go for a little humor, I guess. Um, okay. They're, they're earthlings simple humans these guys amazing just total yeah just randos um earthlings yes but they are good in spirit true in thought and they have abilities no other earthlings seem to have proud yet noble men a minority of their species um if this is what we are dependent on then maybe we should surrender don't really know what's going on here do you no they're shutting off the tv Okay, okay, right, right. You know, they, they've been watching it, and now I guess they've seen enough that they're going to have their council vote now. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Glad I brought you on, because I don't know. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, before my wedding ceremony is over, the Von Eriks will prove to us their abilities. And here we get some silhouettes here in the desert. <laughs> okay, 
Okay, boys. Yeah, in the desert. Uh, okay, boys. We're on our way home. Let's head east. Huh? Or they shall perish. Now that's also... What? Yeah, no idea where that's coming from. What is that ellipse rep referencing like? Wow. Also, yeah, wedding. Um, here's the introduction of the subplot of the emperor getting married while the while the people are facing, uh, you know, enslavement to the evil aliens, and the wedding must go on. That is, yeah, I, I, I don't know. Very strange. Um, let the trials begin, Lieutenant. Okay, now he, this is just like swiped from like Dynasty or something. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, here. I think we've changed changed stations. Like yeah, we're bringing right. in re references now from a different show. <laughs> right, totally. Unbeknownst to the family, they are being watched and tested. Looks like trouble on the horizon. Wow, this depiction of this very lurch looking von Eric, uh, Fritz von Eric here. Um, looks like trouble on the horizon. What are those things? Hey, I had a three three wheeler like that once. That's a reference to their wild you know, extracurriculars that they did have a lot of parachuting, skydiving, cliff diving, craziness, kind of putting motorcycle their lives in accidents. Time. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. Carrie had a insane motorcycle accident where he lost a foot and he wrestled for many years with one foot, which is a, a crazy thing, but true in the episode that we did. Um, yeah. I think any, any, uh, any of his time in WWE was post losing his foot. So, you know, exactly. probably if anybody watching this, has seen footage of him. It probably is WWE footage. And that's, uh, that's on, was it a wooden foot that he, he had? It was a prosthetic that they had made, which allowed him to, uh, it like retrofitted to his, I guess his, his, uh, stump <laughs> for lack of a better term, you know, from, and, and, um, he would wear his boots at all times, uh, because they, the, the family kept it as a very closely guarded secret that he did not, that he, that he didn't lose a foot, you know, which is again, goes to trying to protect the family image after all these tragedies. And it was really hard on him. So, and then, but people would be like, why is he taking a shower in the locker room with his boots on, you know? And that was why. Yeah, and then you got to think like, um, this is a different time in wrestling. Like, was he not getting a physical from WWF? Different you time. Know, like to be able to get in there, like, did they not know he was missing a foot? I mean, I'm sh different time, totally different, different time, pre steroid trials, pre, you know, pre scandal, pre, pre like any medical concern from the office. Right, right, right. For sure. Um, so look out, dad. I like this drawing of dad here, actually. Very different. Kind of dig it. Um, and th this to me kind of looks like what the artist's real capabilities are kind of of drawing the Von Erics when they're not tracing, maybe. I don't know, which I would have preferred more of, I guess. Um, the alien cycle. I have to approach... say that I mostly the... like the look of this book. Oh, you yeah. know, the overall, oh, yeah. like the the art for it, I think is uh, obviously a lot of it is traced. But I like the overall look. You know, it's they do a pretty good job with the black and white, and um, there are genuine panels like that. That top second panel in this page, I feel like, is a really cool panel for like a sci-fi. You know, they're on an alien planet and facing some evil aliens. Mm -hmm. Like that's a good look. I agree. I totally agree. Totally. So then the alien cycle approaches firing its stun guns. I guess that's supposed to be the cycle there. That's cool. Um, and then strike one, swoosh. I guess here's the alien cyclist gets swooshed off of it. Kara uses his fantastic strength to muscle one of the cyc one of the cyclist one of the cyclist to the ground. Whoopsie. Um, that's cool. I dig it. Yeah, very. This is a cool page. All all all, all said and done here. Um, yeah. Um, do you remember two pages ago whenever they found clothes? Guess they didn't <laughs> actually have time to put any of those on. Yeah. 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 Well, Fritz had his, you know, awesome, you know, Ben Gazzara looking, you know, uh, shirt here, collared shirt here. But yeah, definitely the Von Erichs are still missing, missing that. Well, that, that's good. That's the way they should look in a superhero. I agree. Comic. <clears throat> now, this is just, I mean, this is why we're here. I kind of. Um, <laughs> yes. that isn't even a, I mean, I don't even know what that is. Look at his feet in that picture there. There it's like a, like a ballet dancer or something. That's unbelievable. I love it. It's great. Um, very weird, very bizarre pose. Don't know what they're tracing from. It looks like it's, he was like lying on a bed sideways, you know, like his, some kind of magazine s sexy spread, you know, or something. But uh, it's 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 amazing because that's trying to sell a dropkick here. 
Kevin almost flying, leaps catching an alien cycler by surprise. I love how there's alien cyclers is the the foes that they're choosing in this. That, that's interesting. Sorry, no riders. And then here he finds the bike. Yahoo! I think I got the hang of it. rat tat 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 is the sound that it makes, in case you're curious. Oh, and then did he did he crash the... I think he's firing a weapon. I, I think okay, what we're seeing okay. in that previous panel is like a gun or some weapon being discharged. Okay, you're right. You're right. You're right. Not <laughs> super clear. There, there's a few of these sequences where I'm going to have questions like that. But as near as I can tell, that's what's going on. Maybe. Because oh, I was, yeah, because his motorcycle accident was June of 86. And I was thinking, oh, yikes. I thought that's what they were referring to there. But no. Too, yeah, too yeah. soon. Too soon. Too soon. <clears throat> wow, Dad, these things are great. Quit playing around. Somebody pick me up and let's get out of here. So then they, they scram. I like this overhead uh, shot decision here. It's cool. All right. Oh, we got some some more silhouette fails here. Um, <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce this. Captain Oider? Status report. My Supreme Commander, we are now orbiting the planet shielded by an asteroid. Very Star Wars here. A small force has landed on the planet Nemoria. Phase one of the mission has begun. Excellent, Captain. Keep me posted. Yes, sir. Elsewhere. Love this. Gotta love this. Whatever, you know, motel they stayed at and on the road. <laughs> <clears throat> the long-awaited wedding of the young Nemorian emperor to his childhood sweetheart, Princess Devet, begins. This reminds me of when you see behind the scenes in Star Wars and they're like, we were looking at a cheeseburger when we designed the Millennium Falcon. It yes. feels like this, this this building is the same kind of deal, like some ashtray or something sitting on their coffee table. Love it. For sure. For sure. For sure. Maybe a hubcap or something. <laughs> and here she is. This is not what I would have pictured if I were to buy this on the racks. <laughs> You know, is to find that this is where where we'd be at with the saga of Von Eric Warriors. As has been I feel tradition like they, for they dropped the ball here by not having this be a Missy Hyatt. Oh. Like a clear Missy Hyatt photo reference would have been uh, very yes. appreciated. Or it would have been cool if they would have taken all of the characters and the heels and the managers and made them the the villains and stuff. That that is kind of the one thing I don't I, I wish wrestling did more of is take the in-character storylines and, and really build them out into movies. and They haven't really done that yet. Like, How cool would it be to see like an Undertaker movie you know, in the storyline of The Undertaker you know, with no reference to wrestling? You know, That's what you kind of want to see. I'm with you, except for the no reference to wrestling part. Okay. <laughs> I, anytime I see wrestlers in an action movie, I want them to do wrestling moves when oh, they get of in course. fights. Oh, and like, they if would. you watch a karate, you know, like a, like a martial artist, that's doing an action movie. They're doing their martial arts. Like let's see John Cena, like body slamming dudes, you know, and then like a street fight whenever it pops up. You're, 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 you're totally right. Like some sort of like drug deal gone bad in the streets and some guy just DDTs another guy and the concrete sidewalk. Great. That's what you want to be see. Amazing. Totally. A DDT um, in the middle of a street fight would be so you gotta good. Gotta see a DDT in a street fight like that for sure. It'll happen someday. It's something I do. Um, as has been tradition for many years, the young princess moves out onto the balcony to be viewed by the people who will witness her wedding to Emperor Zrael in the hours to come. Help! Call the guards! <laughs> well, this is my shit right here. Um, wow. It's just, it looks so weird. But it's cool, though. I, I dig it. Um, they're in repelling the in. Like, they're, like, uh, you uh, know... The SWAT we, team. Na yeah. Navy SEALs or SWAT team. Like, yeah, repelling into this wedding. So weird. In the blink of an eye, an elite group of Nefarian commandos smash their way into the festivities. Their target, the Emperor. And this is the, the this is a cool page. <laughs> this one feels very power comic-y. Oh, this page. yes. Totally. And this feels kind of very um, uh, Fletcher Hanks, as you were saying. And, um, and uh, shout out to Earthman, one of our other power comics we love here in the channel. These kind of jetpacks <laughs> remind me remind me of Earthman. Um <clears throat> leaving in their wake four ceremonial guards dead. As the Nefarian warriors capture the Nemorian Emperor, ah, you know, this looks like the uh, um, home improvement guy, the his, Tim Allen's friend, kind of. Um, the future is snatched from a defenseless Nemorian people. No mention of the jetpacks, unfortunately, but cool page. I'm, I, I, I love it. 
note the guy that's flying that has three arms because a lot of the uh a lot of the nefarians Whoa. have a three-arm design that is really awesome but it's kind of hit and miss in these commandos they don't they don't all look like they have the three arms but we're going to see some really cool nefarians with the three arms and it looks like there's one of this member of this team that has it i i gotta be honest i did not notice the three armed people this is blowing my mind right now well wait till you turn the page because the money okay. the money shot of the three arms is coming oh but first we have to <laughs> take a little ad break here for world championship wrestling i mean world class championship wrestling excuse me i mean god to be able to go back and order all this shit the t-shirts the jackets the gym bags the I mean, oh my, could you imagine having this shit today? You're worth the I like the foam cap. <laughs> yeah, the foam like, cap. How crappy is that? That's pretty bad. That's the foam cap is, yeah, $6 for the foam cap. Yeah, no thanks. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, love it. All right, let's get to, oh, oh, oh. Yes, wow. For some reason I didn't notice that. My eyes just didn't process that he had a third arm. Wow, love it. Back in the Von Derrick production truck. Um, Council Rastar, there is a disturbance at His Majesty's ceremonies. You are needed at the Corridor of Knowledge. And then it, it gives us the arrow, thankfully. Meanwhile, Supreme Commander, I have captured the Nemorian Emperor. I shall issue the demands at your will. Well done, Captain. You shall be rewarded. Carry out my will. And then, Lieutenant, issue the orders. I mean, crazy design here. Wild tale. <laughs> <laughs> like i mean dig it but oh this is cool i love this hear me von eric warriors like that's cool maybe maybe i'll I'll swipe this and i'll make a t-shirt with this maybe that's kind of what i'm thinking black on white that's a winner i, I think right? that's a really good idea evan I, I think that would produce a great shirt okay cool i think i'm gonna do that um that alien like design's really it's a nice yeah. drawing. I, it makes me wonder like what he's lifting for that. Um, right. But I think it looks really good. And the the face design is just nuts. It, it's like a bunch of parts for an alien or a special effects mask or monster because yeah, he's got is. like a monocle cyborg eye and mm -hmm. then you know, weird ears, like an elf or an alien design of some sort. It's just all over the place. It's cool. It is cool. It's kind of, getting a look at unless he's swiping it from many different things it's getting a look at kind of whoever this artist is kind of what you know what their pure sort of vision is of you know whatever <laughs> <laughs> um which is cool this is kind of just like you know outside of the i mean again not something i would have thought i'd be seeing in the inside of this um but still still pretty sweet um okay so it looks like a jet ski with guns let's go cruising what's that Okay, here we go. Love this Hear Me Von Eric Warriors. And this, uh, you know, I don't know. This is a weird kind of thing to jut in here. But the Von Erics, as they were so close as brothers, they always talked about having like a almost a um, uh, like a like like telepathy between them, you know, uh, with, with, with brothers like that. that were so close, especially in the ring. I just think that's always such a cool thing. They could always like sense what the other was thinking. Like they almost had a superpower. I wonder if that's where they're going with this. But um. <laughs> this is a wild drawing here. This is like, um, I don't know, some like modern art here. <laughs> um, That's a pretty good effect. I, you know, said it before, but the art is is interesting throughout this because there's a bunch of that mark making where, you know, it's little hatching or it's pointillism, you know, reminds me of like a Drew Friedman or something. Mm, and yeah. where those, those figures are dematerializing, I guess. Um, it's an effect, you know, is somebody trying to figure out a graphic effect to to show them as being uh, transporting. It's cool. Again, Star Wars or Star Trek, Star Trek, very Star Trek. Um, who are you? Show yourself. I am Rastar. I guess he's speaking off screen. The Council of Justice, please join me. Yeah. Who are you? If you want us, come and get come and get me, Mr. Tar, Mr. John Tar. <laughs> We're not moving. Who is he, Dad? Where is he? In an instant. The Von Eriks are transported to another location on the planet Nemoria, where they meet Raztar. I apologize for the unpleasant journey from your planet. This is now a dialogue bubble. Uh, as you can see, transportation is less painful over short distances. 
And then uh, Fritz says here, don't give me any technical hogwash. I'm tired and I want to know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> Very true to uh, what Fritz would say in this situation. Um, Von Erichs, please be seated. Eat. I have clothing for you. And then uh, that's a cliffhanger to now. <laughs> <laughs> Sit down right now. Um, come with me, Von Erichs. I will explain. We shall eat later. Okay, so don't eat. Forget it. <laughs> Why even yeah. include that? <laughs> Fritz has no time to eat. He wants yeah. answers. <laughs> yeah, totally. totally. I love the guy does come back around and say, we'll eat later. We're going to eat, yeah. guys. Wait, we got to eat. Gotta eat. Yeah, just amazing rando exposition to put in this. Um, okay, then we got a lot of silhouette action here. And do you see this? We're reusing our Fritz head down here for some reason. That You know what that is? That's a reuse of that whole panel, I think. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's got to be. Because the rock and everything, that pathway is there. So yeah. strange. Yeah. I mean, why not? Did, did they mean to, like, erase that? And they didn't? That's pretty weird, right? It's it's really bizarre. I missed it on, on my uh, on my read and reread. I missed it. So uh, <laughs> I'm glad to catch it work? this time. Yeah. Okay. Long ago, we decided on the uselessness of war. Then we built a civilization whose prime directive is that is the advancement of all knowledge and peace. Raztar pleads his case with the aid of a visual screen. Okay. Oh, visual screen. Oh, maybe he's showing. Okay. Peace. Then who the hell was shooting at us in the desert? Be patient. I will explain. We are now threatened by an evil and cruel empire known as the Nefarians. They seek to expand their rule by trying, taking over, excuse me, our planet. You were chosen because of your abilities, and as noble warriors, you have fought for the good of the people. The uh, The incident in our wasteland was only an illusion from our own minds. Okay, so maybe they can get away with it because it's an illusion of some kind. Um, it's still a right. peculiar choice. It's a weird choice, for sure. How do they get video footage of an illusion from the Von Erich's minds? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, brother. Um, yeah, it's amazing. Uh all right, coming, rounding to the end here. We're, we're, we're getting a few, few more pages left. Um, you see, Von Eric, I love that. Uh, your abilities are the only thing standing between our freedom and our and, or our destruction. Your freedom? Oh, sorry. Your freedom? What about us, man? What about the family we left behind? It doesn't say man, but it feels like it should. Um, look at your watch, Von Eric. It stopped. Okay, that's a cool detail. No, you are... Merely existing between the seconds of your time. Fritz begins to get the picture. <laughs> this is amazing. Fritz von Erich in a fucking crazy sci-fi comic is awesome. I'd we love were... to imagine Fritz reading this and oh, trying to make sense oh, yeah. of it. Like, what did we sign up for? We're not yeah. we're not selling this thing. This yeah, doesn't make totally. any sense. It's so wild. We regret the inconvenience, but understand our situation. We lost four of our brethren today. Ooh, too soon. Um dead our emperor was taken from us we have been ordered by the nefarians to surrender or he will die you should eat now <laughs> okay now you can eat our oh emperor is about to die but we have yeah. time for a good meal yeah you gotta eat um your training on our planet was not completed but we have no more time will you help preserve our peace rastar I don't like the way you do business, but let me tell you something. Those with, uh, who long for peace must prepare for war. Now that sounds like Fritz. Um, the family discusses the plight of the uh, unfortunate race. What do you say, boys? It is a family affair. Okay, cool. Love this training of Carrie. Uh, let's not turn the page until we look at that panel four background. Um, what What is that lady doing? <laughs> Why is I don't she know. part of this? Champagne. The guy's this so is... serious in the front, and she's smiling in the back with like a bottle of booze or something. Going back to Star Trek, man, little Shatnery, little Shatnery. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna say, uh, could be. And yeah, this is just from a magazine ad of, you know, you know, sparkly apple cider. I don't know. It's definitely that's what's going on there. But yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Very weird. Um. All right, you ready to turn the page? Let's let's keep going. Okay. Oh God, Captain Zarel, Zar Zarel, a uh, Kamunik from the planet Namoria. Put it on the visual screens, Lieutenant. Speak quickly, Namorian. Uh, this is very Star Trek. It's right on, man. This is what this is. I am Olan 
From the Council of Tranquility, there is a great division of our people. I wish to avoid needless destruction of life. I want to negotiate a secret surrender. I must say, not a lot of action in this comic. There's not a lot of... I was thinking the same thing. Von Eric warrioring. It's very... Um, I wouldn't have guessed intergalactic politics is where we're going with the Von Eric wrestling comic. Um, like Not even a wrestling movie, except a, for that. A lot like the Star Wars prequels. Yes. That's what this is for sure. It's just yeah, it's just politics. And then um, this is cool. I mean, the design of this character is very cool. Like you said, ha ha, you spineless tar tar. <laughs> God, I didn't want. To, that's <laughs> cringy to read that. Very well, Captain Zarel reels in confidence, not knowing what the Nemorians have planned. Thank you. I am sending a delegation to your ship. We will await their return. Reuse, recycle. Uh, I mean, why not? It's a great panel. Um, it's like the old Wally Wood adage, you know, why draw something you can copy? Of course. <laughs> Docking of the Nemorian shuttle in the bay th in bay three is now complete. Now away echo security teams. Uh, prepare the ship for the delegation. So here we're going to delegation now. Um, all right. This is a cool page. Now we get some wrestling. It really action. does nail a lot of that sci-fi stuff, um, you know, with the long hallways and corridors and stuff here. It, it's funny how much is coming out of that Star Wars and, and all the Star Wars ripoffs kind of visually. Um, a lot of that's in here. And I, I guess maybe that makes sense in the 80s. You're, you're, you're going to do a wrestling story and it's like, what's, what's popular? Star Wars, you know? <laughs> Yeah, I guess, I guess. And uh, yeah, uh, you, you pointed out, Ramey, the uh, one wrestling move for the whole thing so far. This is our second wrestling move, <laughs> uh, which is pretty, pretty crazy. I love this drawing of Fritz here with the light shafts. I mean, that's like this is like Fritz in Cloud City here, which I love, you know. Yeah, yeah that's legitimate. Like he, he could have been in some some noir movie and just been like the heavy in it. Oh, man. Fritz in a noir Damn, that would have been amazing. Wow. Um, this way, my commander and your em your emperor await you in the war room. With every muscle poised for action, Kevin and Carrie stealthily follow the delegation for peace. While a lone figure st stalks the enemy, silently searching for the engine room. So he's stalking here. <laughs> That's amazing. That's cool. Stalking Fritz. Um, the aliens sneer in triumph as the emperor bows to a superior race. Rastar, you came. Yes, Emperor, I'm here to complete my responsibility. And in a blaze of fury, the two Von Erich brothers uh, leash, leash out at the, <laughs> at the ruthless aliens with supernatural strength. Okay, we get some headlocks here. Let's tag team these goons! Yeah! Okay, here we go. Cue the rush. It's about to happen. While Rastar removes his Emperor from the danger. We get a press slam here from, from Kevin. Not really his style. <laughs> his wrestling style but i like sure, that the alien's not? putting his hands up on on his chest like to do the press slam properly you know he's, he's helping like lift his own body weight off of him totally it's perfect perfect wrestling form there yeah he's he's uh he's uh planking as they say uh or, sorry no posting posting is what okay right um <clears throat> he's properly posting off of kevin there yeah right because you're supposed to yeah put all your weight here when you're when you're being lifted um uh all right uh okay last two last two pages here um impressive gentlemen that was exciting we've got to get back to the shuttle let's 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 go kevin what no more what no more this was just getting fun <laughs> meanwhile fritz rigs a surprise uh-oh um there it's done if this thing runs like a bulldozer then these old boys are in for a big surprise <laughs> It's amazing. Run like a bulldozer. Yeah. Like it's the what? most advanced alien technology. They've beamed them across the galaxy, and he's referencing uh, a bulldozer. Well, you know, Fritz is the type of guy just working on machinery in the front lawn all the time, for sure. Um, intruder, stop what you're doing. Fritz reels the wrench at the alien, rendering him helpless. Ah! Uh, catch this spaceman. And now, of course, this is what our entry fee is here. The, the the price of entry is to see uh, Fritz put the claw on something. I would have rioted if there was no freaking claw in this comic, especially given you know the cover signifying the claw. So you had to get Fritz. Fritz had to Fritz had to do the big finish here with the claw for sure. <laughs> uh, 
Um, this says, let's go, dad, but I'm going to read it like, let's go, dad. Um, don't worry about <laughs> me, boys. Him on. They're not yeah, I know, to get I know. spaceship. Yeah, let's go, dad. Put the claw on him. Don't worry about me, boys. I'm on my way. Uh, anyway, he's got it. This alien's got to tap first. <laughs> um, we are unable to locate the captain, sir. Keep searching. Weapons officer lock on to the shuttle. Uh, the aliens are unaware that they are about to die. Okay. That's intense. Um, the intruders make their escape. Von Eric, I hope you were successful. Just keep an eye on the window, bub. Bub. Interesting. She's going to light up the, like the 4th of July. All right. Cool. Page. I like how they all are called just called Von Eric. Like you never know which, which one they're actually talking to. And they're not talking to the Von Eriks. It's Von Eric. Just, yeah. just one of you. That's Good luck figuring out which one. Yeah, that's their race. <laughs> but it's also like, <laughs> yeah, it's not good for like Von Eric branding purposes. If we're if, if this is supposed to be an educational, you know, uh, thing here, like okay, you know, to get, to get to know the wrestlers through comics. I, I don't know who, which one Kevin or Carrie really is, you know, because they're not really. Dude, Fritz, I get, which is great. I'm glad that Fritz is getting a moment here with this claw. Um, all right. Here's the conclusion. Oh, man, now this is great. How about this, Jim? Von Eric Blacklight poster? <laughs> Would you like that? You, you, that is, you know that all is about definitely a merch opportunity that they left on the table. You know all about that. Yeah, you should you, Yeah, get to work on that Von Eric Blacklight poster if you can. <laughs> yeah, I have to reach out to Kevin, see if that license is available. <laughs> I'm sure it is, brother. <laughs> um, uh, so... Uh, yeah, amazing. This is this is great. This is a great shirt option or opportunity too, especially with the spaceship too. Um, <laughs> Out yeah. of context of this book, you couldn't identify any of those three faces. <laughs> no, no, not at all. Maybe <laughs> They're the, Kevin's. the worst likenesses in this whole book. <laughs> totally, totally. Um, Silence falls on the tiny vehicle as the reality of death and destruction is revealed to the Nemorians. Okay, so a big Death Star explosion here. Uh, for now, peace had been restored to the distant planet. Now the Von Eriks need not ponder helping this defenseless people. The decision had been made. They would stay and help a while. Stay for a while. Um, I feel like they just saved the day. If I miss something, that they're going to stick around now? They need more help? I, I don't know. Maybe leave it for the sequel? I don't know. Yeah. Very weird. Weird ending. Um, I would definitely give some notes to the uh to the sage productions um more than three panels of wrestling moves please oh man three panels of wrestling moves i wonder why they chose to do it in in that way um again yeah it would have been awesome to see like an alien get ddt or more claws more claws than the aliens for sure would love suplex? to have seen that. suplex could have done sure. like like a like a tall vertical panel of a suplex you know what i also noticed oh no no i i wanted to make sure they got a detail right which they did which is, yeah, Kevin being barefoot. Okay, I had to make sure that Kevin was appropriately barefoot in this because he wrestles barefoot, which is um, very unique, uh, especially at that time. Um, one thing I wanted to say is we've been talking a lot about Star Wars and Star Trek and things like that. I actually remember when we were making the Von Eric episode and we, were, we traveled all the way out to Hawaii to visit Kevin, and the actual episode is called The Last of the Von Erics. That's the name of the episode. And I, I remember thinking about a Star Wars parallel, you know, a little bit to him being kind of the last Jedi. I know this is super nerdy, but kind of like traveling out to that island, he kind of looks Luke Skywalker-ish, you know, uh, especially the hair when he had it in, yeah, in his prime. Yeah, it's really bizarre that you say that, but yes, he does. You know, and he does, and, and it's it's like that was something that was on my mind. It's like, you know, he is kind of like this Jedi warrior, or that's kind of what the Von Eriks were in a way, you know, uh, in their prime. And so it was kind of like going to visit Luke in that movie, you know, <laughs> a little bit. Um, <laughs> but, um, again, more space for autographs. Got to get those in for sure. Um, and then we're just left with whatever this is. Blue Warriors. Any any guesses? Submarine Adventure? <laughs> Makes me wonder, like, you know, Sage Productions, were they really trying to make comics? I wonder if they made any other comics besides this. They've certainly got a staff there. They got um, a staff. That's a lot of people to produce just one book. I know. I actually did look them up on Mile High, and I saw one other thing listed, but it was not um, 
It was not, unfortunately, not Blue Warriors. So it's a nice picture of a sub. <laughs> Again, yeah, more more heavy swipage from Sage. But man, that was great. I mean, you know, weird weird choices, but lost relic. You know, um, it weird. reminds me a little bit of um, like. Uh, you know, the luchadors, they would make like the movies where, where, you know, Blue Demon or El Santos or somebody would be uh, having these adventures that they still look like a wrestler, you know, still in their mask, but they're out in the middle of wherever they're fighting monsters. You know, it's, it's unwrestling related adventures that they would be on, even though they looked like a wrestler the whole time or the wrestling character. This feels a little bit like that. Totally. Um, and they have some of those comics. I have a Blue Demon comic. I think it's blue Whoa. demon but it's all it's fumetti it's all um photographs but it looks like those movies and this kind of feels like they would have been aware of those comics and looking in that direction you know because they're it's such a stretch you know sometimes when you see wrestlers that are going into some other media you know a cartoon or something the references to the wrestling still remain strong it's almost like they're just you know it's between matches or something mm. um this one is is that far out element so um I don't know, maybe inspired by some of the some of the luchador adventures. Very interesting. Yeah. I, I, I would sort of like to think that this is obviously, you know, a fan that had an idea came to Fritz, you know, to and was just like, We could do a comic. Well, sure. You know, does it cost us anything? You know, and then like, no, and then and then, you know, they, they kind of put it into the action. But yeah, uh Jeff Miller in in the chat says, you know, there's gotta be autographed copies of this comic out there. Man, that would be awesome to have like your saga of the Von Erich warriors, like signed by all the Von Erichs. That'd be so cool. Yeah. So, I feel like you, you uh, missed a chance, Evan, whenever, whenever you saw Kevin in person and talked about this comic to not get this comic signed. That's why did I do that? Why? I mean, maybe I'll see Kevin again and maybe we can arrange for that. Um, just real quick uh, before we sign off, I wanted to also just bring it back to the power TV. Cause I wanted to just show from the, just this little snippet from the episode where we actually showed the comic just because we had to put it on TV. So this comic was on, you know, cable television just a few years ago. Um, they came up with a comic book where uh, there's some bad guys that are trying to take over the universe and they need the Von Erks because our hearts are so good. So that was just, we just cleaned up space a little bit. You know, it's just a riff riffraff. <laughs> the girls just... <laughs> so just had to show that, you know, just like amazing... You know, we had we had to get that in there. And it was cool that Kevin remembered it, you know, and was like, yeah, we had to do that and just beat up the riffraff, you know. Um, so that that was really cool to, to have put that in the show because he had to get the Power Comics reference in, in the show. There's got to be more comics like this, you know, like wrestling merch promo kind of stuff. There had to be a bunch of this stuff at different uh, dif different stops, you know, different territories around around the way. <sighs> You'd think like, like a ter territory in L.A. or something like that you'd think some, somebody would be making like bootleg comics of uh, those characters. Well, there's one thing I want to show you, which I don't think ever was made. And maybe you're already aware of this. You're probably already hip to this. But um, first, I want to shout out in the chat, Andrew Gordon McPherson is here. He uh, actually is the composer of Dark Side of the Ring. So that music, little sample you heard there, he composed every bit of music that's in our show. Thank you, Andrew. Um, but check this out, man. You, you, you have to have this. You, you're, you're definitely all over this. Do you got, um, do, you, do you know where I'm going with this? No, I, I do know this comic, but I, I don't know what the connection would be. Okay. So global force Two, pretty innocuous. Sorry. Adjust my camera here. Pretty innocuous. Right. But when you're flipping through it, Jim, there is an ad for the John stud comic book. Wow. Have you seen this? Man, that looks good too. Look how cool <laughs> he looks. I know. Oh, color. I know. So the big John Studd comic book, 32 pages, full color. I mean, that looks kick-ass. That looks like what – that's fucking DDTs on the sidewalk. That's what that this is. <laughs> you know? So so maybe – oh, yeah. A Andrew, by the way, is a big kayfaber. Uh, he, he's the one I was mentioning at the top of the show that got me into cartoons kayfabe. So he's here. Hello, Andrew. But, um, dude, I fucking – this I, I don't think this ever came out. I really don't. Um, what do we do? I do this... remember seeing this ad, and I, and I did a little bit of searching and never saw any scrap of this. And that's the thing with like these 80s comics, these power comics. You find ads that look really cool. I spent probably five years looking for Viet Ninja, and 
I'm pretty certain that it just was never produced, but it'll get mentioned, you know, like in a letters column or, or kind of the back matter like this, but I've never seen anything, uh, any proof of the big John stud comic book, just this one ad. Oh yeah. And, uh, Ramey points out the, uh, tagline LA is a big town. But John Studd is bigger. <laughs> and he man, was that's, huge. That's man. like a porno out of Boogie Nights or something. <laughs> totally. Big totally. John Studd. Big John Studd. Yeah, totally. Even totally. the double D's. Like... Totally. No, I think big... Vince mix, missed some opportunities with this guy. <laughs> totally. It could have been no. about Venus like 10 years early. Totally. Dude, Big John Studd, uh, build height 6'10". Big John Studd was. I don't know. I mean, usually they usually give him an extra few inches in the building, but I mean, big dude it was in the first WrestleMania. Um, I mean, I think he headlined first WrestleMania, um, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, Big I think John he won an early Royal Rumble. Is that, does that sound right? Like maybe the second or third Royal Rumble? I think the first Rumble was Duggan. I think mm-hmm. was, was Stud already kind of on his way out by then. Maybe I think he came back for just a cup of coffee and and got a tiny push and then didn't do anything. So I don't know if who knows maybe he's battling injuries or not healthy at that time but i feel like he was back enough to like make one splash and i think it was a royal rumble win oh you might be right or, or some or some battle royale of some kind or so- something yeah, yeah. Some, something yeah. something that was like big john studs back and then like he that was pretty much it i don't think he was actually back more than that right. but yeah big he john turned on Stud- the heenan family right right of course as, as you do <laughs> but the big john stud man somewhere hopefully there's drawings of this out there somewhere that we can track down some way jeff miller if you're in the chat get on it try to find the big john stud original artwork please thanks um well done i i would i would love to see more of the big john stud comic totally 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 well jim this has been so much fun man we went long we definitely went long in the von erics hope hope, hope it's okay hope that's all right um I feel like you have to give them their the, you know you got to do do justice to the von erics 100 percent. you have to for sure and 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 we certainly did looking into the history of a little bit of the family and now and, and this weird piece of wrestling ephemera very rare by the way i don't know if it's there's copies out there on mile high if you want to check it out and see if you can get your own but or just start digging through the dollar bins in dallas you might might come up with a few <laughs> but uh yeah saga of the von eric warriors oh jim if you don't mind i want to plug two quick things and you if you want to plug anything do you have anything how about you go first is there anything you want to plug to the power comic yeah account? anybody that's uh, unfamiliar with with me and what we do um cartoonist kayfabe it's been mentioned a couple of times you can find us on youtube um the comics channel i do with my partner ed piscor we look at comics and every day post a comics video uh, interview comics professionals um, go through page by page, look at different things. I think today's video was about the best colored Marvel comic of all time. So Whoa. Um, definitely give give that a, a look if you are a comics fan and you're not familiar with cartoonist kayfabe. Um, and you can follow me at uh, um, patreon.com slash Jim Rugg. I post a lot of my original art uh, along with out of print zines and mini comics. You can download about a dozen of those as soon as you join me, including a um, black and white zine compilation of pretty much power comics, the eighties black and white explosion comics. Uh, when I really first started getting into them, I made this zine. It's like 80 pages of collages and panels and back matter and ads and all the stuff that makes those comics so great. So when you join my Patreon, you can download that immediately. Sweet. Yeah. I put the links to, uh, the cartoonist kayfabe YouTube, uh, in the chat as well as Jim's Patreon. And that'll also be in the description of the vid. Thanks so much, Jim. Uh, just a couple of quick things. Uh, this actually relates to you as well, because I know you received one of these. And that's, I'm, I'm here to unveil a date, which is for the Power Comics Hall of Fame, Jim, is coming up. And that is uh, going to be on December 7th here on the YouTube channel. Uh, this is the Epic Power Comics First Annual Hall of Fame uh, 2021 class. We are picking five standalone power comic issues that will get in to the first inaugural class and three creators. And we've sent ballots out to folks like Jim Rugg and others who will vote and cast their very important ballots uh, for the power comics hall of fame. And that ceremony is going to be a big deal. We got celebrity guests, musical guests. It's going to be, it's going to be crazy. It's going to be wild out of control. December 7th, 8 PM Eastern right here. Um, The only other thing, uh, Oh, is next week. Sorry, next week's show, Jim, you might you might dig this. Um, we're going back to one of the craziest, most unhinged 
uh, Canadian Power Comics series. I'm sure you have every single one of these. Um, macabre. <laughs> Do you have this? Wow. I have some macabre. I did not realize there were six issues. Is it only six issues? Uh, I, I think I have like an issue one or two of this series. It's two volumes. Uh, there's two. There's six issues in the first volume and two in the second. They're absolutely, absolutely wild and out of control. Um, and this That's one, a great cover. It's an amazing. It's amazing. I, I actually, um, this one is my favorite. We've actually covered this one on the channel before. This is my favorite macabre cover. <laughs> it's just. I think I, I mean, have that one. It's the best. Yeah, talk about a T-shirt. Um, and um, but this one, uh, I got a shipment of a bunch of macabs in recently. And this one we thumbed through, and this is the most insane of the bunch. This is a deranged comic. So uh, our Manhattan correspondent, Ramey Bennett, is going to be on the show next week. Gabe Dyke will be back. And we're looking at Macabre 6. So if you guys want to get down with – you guys are covering Marvel, the best colored Marvel cut. We got Macabre 6 over here. So if you want to come join, <laughs> come watch. We're looking comics at Macabre for everyone. 6. Comics for everyone. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so come uh, same time, same channel, 8 p.m. Eastern next week, Tuesday, Macabre 6. Um, all right. Well, that was awesome. That was fun, Jim. Thanks so much for coming on the Power Comics channel. I mean, you know, crossover time, big time. Yeah, man, loved it. Hopefully I'll be back again soon. Oh, we got to have you back. We have to have you back. I'm sure everybody wants to have you back. Um, all right. Well, uh, I guess we'll, we will see you guys soon. We'll see you next week. Thanks so much for tuning in. And um, yeah, we will see you next week. All right. Thanks, everybody. Take care.